after winning last night's game with their number three starter. Think of the Yankees plight if they lose the game tonight. After an off day tomorrow, they go into Fenway Park and face Pedro Martinez down two games to nothing. Joe Torre telling us before the game, this is a do-or-die situation, a must-win. However, if we don't win the next day, I'll tell you that it really wasn't a must-win. With that being said, we turn to Brett Boone, and we'll ask you about these two starters. Tell me about uh, Derek Lowe. He's kind of a one-pitch guy, isn't he? He is. I mean, you, you know what you're going to get. He's going to throw you a sinker, sinker, sinker. He's going to occasionally mix in a slider. But pretty much, when in doubt, he's coming with a second. He'll change speeds with it, too. Uh, on the other side, you've got Andy Pettit. What a year he had and what a huge start he had, as we said, in game two against Minnesota. Seeing Andy this year, uh, it's the best I've seen him. I mean, there's just no pattern to him. He'll throw you. You'll come up one at bat. He'll throw you all fastballs. Next at bat, he's, he'll go to the curveball change. I mean, he's got five pitches. He's got the he's got the fastball. He's got the cut fastball. He's got the curveball, the slide. So... That is the matchup tonight. Derek Lowe, Andy Pettit, the Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees. Last night, I guess there was a spell cast around here under a full moon. A little bit of everything, including a runaway challenger. It was a victory for the Boston Red Sox. It's game two tonight. Because you're mine. It's got a different electricity here tonight, and Andy Pettit is going to be asked by his teammates to do what he did against Minnesota in the division series, and that is get a win in game two. Here's the lineup for the Red Sox, brought to you by State Farm. Gabe Kapler leads it off, and Bill Miller bats second. No Mar Garcia Parra, 0 for 5 last night, hits third. Manny Ramirez homered. In fact, he had four hits last night. David Ortiz got the scoring started for Boston. Kevin Millar, Jason Veritek, Trot Nixon, and Damian Jackson in the lineup not just because he's a right handed bat but because of the way he plays second base with the sinker baller Derek Lowe on the mound but for the Yankees it's a left hander throwing better now than maybe he ever has in his big league life Andy Pettit he has rarely been as dominant as he was in game two in the divisional series against the Minnesota Twins so he's off that performance a lot of ground balls he faced 29 hitters for the Twins and he gave up three fly balls two for outs and one home run to Torrey Hunter. Gabe Kapler first up for the Red Sox. And the ball drops low and away. The home plate umpire is Terry Kraft tonight. And you see what Kapler's done this postseason looking for his first. On the corner one and one. Again, it'll be Kapler, then Miller, then Garcia Barra against Andy Pettit, who his last five starts is 5 0 with a 1.45 ERA. To the left side, Jeter. No chance. And it's an infield hit for Kapler and a good start for Boston as Gabe Kapler gets his first hit of the postseason. And that is one of the big differences between Derek Jeter and Nomar Garcia Parra. Garcia Parra will charge a ball like that, plant the foot, and throw sidearm. Jeter likes to jump to make that play. Yeah, he does that different, different than most shortstops. Most shortstops will go get that ball, set their feet, and throw. But Derek's, he's been very successful with that jump throw that, that you see him do quite a bit. But that deep in the hole with Kapler's speed, no chance, even if he came away. And that exchange cleanly and now with a runner at first and nobody out it's Bill Miller the AL batting champ with an average of 326 during the regular season. That's low for ball one. If you talk to Joe Torre he will tell you that Andy Pettit throws harder now than he did a couple of years ago. And if you talk to Brett Boone he'll tell you you never know what you're going to get out of Andy Pettit. He is unpredictable. He is. The only thing you can predict a little bit with Andy is is the situation of the game. He he, he will pitch you a little bit. For instance, runner on third base, less than two outs. He's going to try to get that ground ball. He's going to try to jam you. He's probably going to throw your cutters in on your hands. And at worst, he's going to walk in that situation. Well, you've got a ground ball situation right here. Look for him probably to come inside with that cutter. One ball, no strikes on Bill Miller. Had a hit last night. Only three this entire postseason. 
Everybody wondered where the Red Sox offense went in that divisional series. And they hit just 211. Well, last night it showed up. Five runs, 13 hits, three home runs. And as a team, they led the American League by hitting 289 during the regular season. Saw Johnny Damon on the bench. He looked terrific taking batting practice before this game. He's close. 2 0. Boy, that's great hair. And you've got an entire dugout filled with guys with shaved heads. Yeah, he's the only one with hair. And I mean, he's to the extreme. <laughs> he's been working on it all year. Yeah. That's what he told me. I mean, that's postseason hair right there. <laughs> the haircut after the World Series, the Red Sox hope. A 2 0 pitch. Miller. 2 and 1. The rest of the group, with the exception of Nomar Garcia Parra, we just walk in their clubhouse and in the bathroom area, the clubhouse here at Yankee Stadium, they're just little piles of hair from different spots in front of the mirror. It's an ongoing process. 2 1 pitch. Pettit shows that good pickoff throw over to first. I would imagine no runner, no matter how accomplished, is ever. Comfortable taking a lead against Andy Pettit. Yeah, even though Andy didn't pick off anybody this year, he does have 67 pickoffs since breaking in in 1995. That's the most in the majors. Not only does he prevent stolen bases, but keeps them close at first. That's in for a strike. It's two and two. And by keeping them close to first base in double play situations, he doesn't have to give. The runner a chance to get down on second baseman, something you've got to appreciate. I do, I do. <laughs> I don't like those guys coming in on. Uh -huh. This crowd was quiet for the most part last night, trying to help these Yankees win game two. Full count. Garcia Parra waiting on deck. Contact hitter Andy Pettit with a good move if Kapler is running and I assume he will be you must make sure Pettit throws home you cannot be picked off in this situation. Kapler did go he did make sure and Miller got a good rip and fouled it straight back. Fastball to hit right here. Belly button high. Hitters love that. Last night starter and winner for the Red Sox, Tim Wakefield. Runner goes. The pitch is strike. The throw down. Double play. It's up to the hitter to make contact. It's unusual for Miller to freeze on that pitch, but because Kapler was not able to get a good jump, they have him by about four feet at second base. So now two out, nobody on, and Garcia Parra steps in. Ball one. Garcia Parra not using his white bat tonight. He's back to the black bat that he's been using all season. Right up the middle. And he with, got in <laughs> with that black bat. <laughs> and he's on with a two out I, I know that all too well. Because I usually don't use a black bat, but it, occasionally when nothing's working, I'll go to it. In this ultra fair booth, I will say that Brett Boone called my attention to that before the game. <laughs> and I did not know that. But he went 0 for 4 with the white bat last night. And tonight he uses the black one. And he gets a base hit his first time up as you take one more look at that strikeout double play. Well, there's, there's just certain guys that you notice always use the same bat. Uh, Alex always used a black bat. Second half of this season, he's using a white bat. Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, and got hot. And the dirt ball one to Manny Ramirez, who is a guy who has handled Andy Pettit. 
four home runs. This includes postseason. A 418 average against this Yankee left hander. Manny Ramirez, who grew up in Washington Heights, a New York native. Lines one hard and off the glove of Soriano. Garcia Parra will go to third. And it's first and third with two out on another Manny Ramirez hit. This shows you how important that throw by Posada was. The Red Sox have three hits in this inning and nothing to show for it so far. You look at that play that ball Brett was scorched but Soriano was able to get a glove on. I mean it's hit hard you, you've got to make the decision right off the bat you're either going to go get it or you're going to back up a couple steps uh, but sometimes when it hits, it's hit that hard you, you know you're going to just try to hope it goes in in that situation it didn't. But, uh, I don't know it's a do or die it's a do or die. Soriano 19 errors this season. Sets up first and third for Ortiz. Last night Ortiz in the fourth. Broke an 0 for 20 streak against Mike Messina with that shot into the front of the upper deck. That made it 2 nothing and the Red Sox won it 5 2. Zone two. You might think that like most left handers that Andy Pettit would be dominant against left handed batters as you see here that is not the case. Ortiz a guy with two strikes who will go the opposite field. He has done that in Fenway Park all year. The green monster in left field very inviting at Fenway. Balls, two strikes. The more you hang around these Red Sox, the more they will tell you that in the clubhouse, in the dugout, and on the field with a bat in his hand, David Ortiz has made the biggest difference from a year ago. And you consider what he did in the second half down the stretch. Seven home runs this season against Yankee pitching, including the one last night. Was 0-2 and, and now it's 3-2. and two. Nick Johnson trying to get Andy Pettit's attention to tell him that he's going to play behind him at first. The Yankees don't do that often because of the Pettit move. Two. The bases are loaded with two out. So the Red Sox in the inning have three singles, a walk, still no runs. Lost a man, Kapler on the bases, and the inning falls into the lap of Kevin Millar. Last night, two hits in RBI, and the postseason, seven hits. Red Sox with a chance to take this at least at the beginning loud Yankee Stadium crowd right out of it. Staple pitch the cutter inside. This one down and away ball one. Yeah he missed with it. He missed by about a foot. Or hey set up inside. And just didn't throw where he's trying to. So one ball no strikes on Kevin Millar.
Should end the year. Jeter. No score after a half. He had against Oakland. Here's the starting lineup for the Yankees brought to you by State Farm. It'll be Soriano, then Jeter and Giambi, the DH. Bernie Williams, Jorge Posada, and Matsui in left field. With Nick Johnson, Aaron Boone, and Kareem Garcia getting the start tonight, taking the place of Juan Rivera. And doing so against this right hander who was involved in three of the five division series games. He had a record of 0 1, but an ERA of under one, and got that big save on Monday night in game five. Soriano first up. Joe's bunt takes a strike. Nothing in two. As Booney said in the opening, a dominant ground ball pitcher. How dominant? The most dominant ground ball pitcher in the major leagues. Almost 80% of his pitches on which contact was made on the ground. Yeah, he just moves in. I mean, he just he's gonna throw that sinker pretty much every pitch. And he he'll just change speeds with it. He'll throw 185, 190. Would you categorize it as a heavy sinker or no? Not a heavy sinker. It's, it's not one that, you know, some guys, you know, some guys like a Maddox, uh, Kevin Brown, it, it, it comes off your bat like a, like a bowling ball. <laughs> That's you know, it's, it's tough to lift it. It doesn't feel like that coming off his bat. It's, it's kind of floating up there, but it just moves so much that you miss it or you, or you foul, and you keep foul tipping it, and it drives you nuts. 0 oh, 2 to Soriano. Another foul tip, and it's still on two. That was an interesting question, Joe, because of the of the heavy pitches that a pitcher throws, any ball that goes down is much heavier than any ball that stays on the same plane. A two-seam fastball is heavier than a four-seam fastball, for instance. And that's why often they hit guys like low on the ground. You hit the top half of the ball. Another 0 2. Well, I'll give you an example. The example is Rivera. He's come up, he's always been the cutter ball. Right. Now he's got that two seamer. That's a heavy ball. If he jams you with that, you know you're jammed. <laughs> you know? Jam and and his has got a lot more uh, action on it, but it breaks sooner. The one with late breaks. This pitch swung on and believe foul tip into the glove of Veritech for out number one a strikeout and here's the scouting report and you could flip flop those uh, uh, for Andy Pettit you can say to see Derek Lowe both both pitchers ground ball pitchers one sinker after another and I think all America all baseball fans in America are familiar with that strikeout pitch to Terrence Long to win it for the Red Sox this one however different diving out of the strike zone to Soriano. So with one out, here's Jeter. Last night had a nine game hitting streak in the postseason snapped. 0 for 4, and it was Wakefield doing it to him. One at bat against Timlin. That ball stays down, and that's strike one. Everybody wants to talk about the stats as you look at Wakefield, who historically has been good at Yankee Stadium. You think about Derek Lowe, his ERA on the road this year for a 17 game winner. Was 6.11. So again, here are the Red Sox. They basically have their rotation backward. Instead of having Pedro pitch in a game one because they had to use him in game five in the division series, he's not available until Saturday. Lowe is a guy they would love to pitch at Fenway Park, but they have to use him here tonight. And as Tim said in the opening, if the Red Sox can sneak out of here with another win, they go home. They have Pedro Martinez pitching on Saturday afternoon. Garcia Parra. Two up, two down. And Joe Torre may have been joking about it, saying this is a must win situation, and then saying if we don't win I'll, on Saturday, I'll tell you it wasn't a must win situation. This is pretty close to a must win situation. It really is. That, that, that term is bandied about. Uh, often in baseball that this is a must win big game big game you play so many games you're not sure what's a big game 
but this is uh, this is huge for the Yankees. If they lose this one, they're in real trouble. The two out, Giambi takes a ball. Timmy, if they lose this, is is Saturday a must win? Yeah. Oh. Then Saturday is okay. a big game. That was Tori's point. What about Sunday? Sunday would be a big game. That'd be that even bigger if they lose <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, no strikes. With two out, nobody on. Giambi has had minimal impact so far in the postseason. Four out of 19 with two RBIs. Giambi's, Giambi's had a tough time getting around on the high fastball. And now he's going to get a low fastball. When you're behind in the count, you try to stay away from a hitter like Giambi. Not there. That's dangerous. But it missed, and it's 3 0. I'm surprised Veritek is setting up inside. When a pitcher's behind in the count, that is not a jamming situation. You don't want to come inside to a hitter. Now away and on the corner well, three and one. The only thing about that is I think what he's what he's doing with that pitch is he wants he wants Giambi to give up on the ball. Because it has so much late sink to it, you give up on it, you think it's a ball and it comes it comes back on the in, inner half of the play. Mm -hmm. Three one pitch. He checked his swing and it's a two out walk. Just a point, Joe, as this pitch misses outside to Giambi, who walks a lot over 100 times again this year. But contributing to Derek Lowe's problems on the road, perhaps, are on the road, a pitcher pitches off of different mounds. A hitter hits out of, for the most part, the same batter's boxes. But a pitcher pitches off of different mounds. The slope may be different in different ballparks. He's 6'6". Six, six. Fenway Park's got to be to his liking. He's been so successful there. It might be a contributing factor. He's a guy that led the league with 42 saves in 2000. He came back and was 5 and 10 the next year with only 24 saves. They were booing him off the mound night after night. Now he's a starter and he's gone 38 and 15 the last two years in that role. He misses with ball one to Bernie Williams. Misses with ball two. Bernie Williams, fifth on the all time LCS average list, right behind number four, Dusty Baker, who is sitting in a hotel somewhere in South Florida watching this game. And a two hopper to Darcy Parr. That'll do it for the Yankees in the first. Boston stranded three, the Yankees leave one. And after one, game two, no score. Sox with three singles and a walk, but no damage done against Pettit, who threw only one first pitch strike in that first inning and threw a total of 22 pitches. Veritek first up, and he takes a strike. Veritek, then Nixon, then Damian Jackson. Jason Veritek, the one who tied that game five on Monday night with a home run against Zito. Later in the inning, a three run shot by Manny Ramirez. It's 0 2 on the Boston catcher. Fastball. Can't shake that many times. That's down the right field line and fair into the corner. Veritek will cruise into second. The throw by Garcia is too late, and it's a leadoff double. We talked about that several times when a pitcher shakes his head yes and then shakes his head yes. He's, he's shaking it for the pitch first and for location second. And when you do that to a catcher, the one thing you can eliminate, you, sa you saw the shaking of the head twice. You can eliminate the off speed pitch, fastball away. Veritek went to Georgia Tech. He's a smart guy. Double. <laughs> Did you know that, Bone? <laughs> You can take I'm that not, back only, with you. I went to USC. <laughs> you can take that back with you to Seattle next year. 
if a pitcher nods his head twice, look for the fastball. Well, think about it. And, and what if he throws me the breaking pitch? And he's not going to do that. I'm going to go looking for Timmy. You That's can email exactly. Tim. Okay. The reason he's not going to throw you a breaking pitch is because all breaking pitches' locations are implied. Come on. That's a catcher. Fastball is the one you move from inside to outside. So if you shake your head, yes, yes, I want the fastball. Shake your head again, yes, I want it either inside or outside. Eliminate all the other pitches. Come on. Nixon dumps one into center field. Veritek will go to third, and it's first and third, nobody out. So there's a lefty Nixon getting a hit against Pettit. And a big scoring chance for the Boston Red Sox here in the second with the number nine man Jackson coming up. One of the big reasons that Andy Pettit has not been that successful throughout his career against left handers, he doesn't have that tailing fastball coming in on the hand. That ball sailing out over the middle of the plate. And Nixon hit it very hard up the middle. So Pettit was in a ton of trouble in the first, got out of it. And now at first and third, nobody out. Here's Damian Jackson with a chance to put Boston on top. And this is the situation where he usually comes with that cutter in. Try to get that ground ball to third base. That third baseman is Aaron Boone. He is in. I was wrong again. And ball one drops low. Looks like the infield, the middle infielders, Booney, are playing unusually shallow. I know they're cheating for a double play, but Jackson's such a fast runner. I don't know if you're going to get two on this. Be more inclined That's to come home, right? Not not up the middle, but at third or first. But it, 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 it's up to the first and the third baseman to make that make that uh, judgment once the ball, how hard it's hit. You know, if it's soft roller, Veritech follows the play in they're going to go home but if it's a one hop shot Aaron's probably going to he's probably going to check the runner back and, and try to turn a double play. Timmy, back I, I, easily. I feel funny saying Aaron. <laughs> what are you calling Arnie Arnie that's Arnie. Oh Arnie Arnie as in Palmer. I, I don't know it's just his <laughs> nickname. Arnie. One ball, one strike on Damian Jackson. First and third, nobody out. Talked about it during the lineup portion of the telecast. That Jackson's really in there for his defensive work, playing behind the sinker balling Derek Lowe. And now the Red Sox ask for a big hit out of a guy who hit 261 during the regular season. Center field, three straight hits, and the Red Sox lead by one. Kind of a jam shot into center, and after a leadoff double, a pair of singles in Boston still has two on with nobody out. Looked like Andy tried to come inside on Jackson, and that ball staying out, out over the middle of the plate just like it did to Trot Nixon. The cutter isn't cutting. He's just not quite get it to the location he wants to get it to. So a meeting on the mound as Mel Stottlemyre goes out to talk with Andy Pettit, our Sprint Virtual Manager question. Which curse is worse to you? Curse of the Bambino or the Billy Goat? The Red Sox or the Cubs? To answer today's question, use your PCS Vision phone from Sprint or log on to FoxSports.com, which we can either type in our answer here or Brett you could get the number and call the guy who told you to tell your brother how to hit on your way into the stadium this afternoon here at Yankee Stadium Arnie 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 he got on you right. too huh? he got on McCarver he got too on me he asked me what uh, what color I was going to color my hair next year <laughs> here's a 28 year old who doesn't have any hair getting on me he didn't get on my hair no he didn't he must really but, like he, <laughs> but, but he should but, but he should have <laughs> With two on and nobody out, 
Back to the top of the order. Kapler grounds one to Jeter. He'll take it himself. Double play. Two out. Easy turn for Derek Jeter, close enough to second to take it himself. So a big double play turned by the Yankees as they try to limit the damage. It's a runner in third, two out, and Miller coming up. Miller takes a strike. Already six hits on the board for Boston. One ball, one strike. That's a six. There's just a light bulb that's out. Good work, Joe. Thanks. Hey, it made me look. I looked up there first and had to check. One one pitch. Two balls and a strike. Darcy Parra would be next if Miller can keep this inning alive. What a difference a series makes. Only seven base runners total in the seven innings against Minnesota. Having a tough time getting ahead of these hitters is Andy Pettit. And then in this inning when he's been ahead, he's been leaving balls over the heart of the plate to be hit. Three and one now on Miller. Stays up there. I think Bill's probably thinking about that first three-two pitch he took. He has swung at two balls out of the strike zone. He doesn't want to get called out again. He was at the plate on the front end of a strike him out throw him out double play in the first. Left side for Aaron Boone. Tough play. Good play, and the inning is over. Three straight hits to start the inning. Only one run on the board for the Boston Red Sox as Pettit limits the damage. But Boston strikes first. They lead in the series, and they lead in game two. Chevy Silverado, it's the right truck. By Staples, that was easy. By Pepsi, complete. Just one and heartburn's done. And by America Online, look for 9.0 optimized coming this fall. That's our shot from the moon up above. Shut up the moon, Joe. <laughs> Shut up, sorry. Good for those prepositions. As a pitch is outside for a ball to Jorge Posada. Posada, Matsui, Nick Johnson. One to nothing Boston on the RBI hit by Damian Jackson. Two and oh. Is Ed here tonight? Our guy in the upper deck, yeah. Ed Hillel. Yes. I don't know, but he was an instant celebrity. Three and oh. Ed is not here. Josh Mandelbaum not here. No. 18 year old Josh Mandelbaum. There's a strike to Jorge Posada three and one. It was Josh's hand that actually touched the ball down the line in front of the pole last night off the bat of Walker. 
And it was Ed Hillel who told the world that it clearly would have gone foul from his vantage point on the other side of the pole. A leadoff walk to Jorge Posada. There will be a special investigative report on that play coming up in the middle of the seventh inning. That's all I'll say. It definitively answers the question if the ball hit the foul pole. Here's Matsui. One for two last night with an RBI. We asked Joe Torre in our meeting tonight if he would hit and run, obviously against a ground ball pitcher. That's the pitcher you want to hit and run against. He said absolutely. The three guys he will not hit and run with, Soriano, Giambi, and Bernie Williams. But Matsui, the ideal guy with whom to hit and run. Because he hits all the ground balls anyway. Most in the American League this year. Came to the States with his nickname Godzilla. And with the start he had, they started calling him Groundzilla. As he grounds one to Jackson in the four side at second, one on, one out. That was about the time the Yankees rolled into Cincinnati and Joe Torre pushed Matsui down in the order. He got hot and then for about a month just carried this offense and ended up in his first season here with 106 RBIs. Here's Nick Johnson. Johnson steps in only one out of 16 in the postseason. After ending the season, one for his last 17. You add those together, and it's like two for quit it. Quit it. All in one, the count on Johnson. Carry the one. <laughs> One on, one out. Yankees down by a run here in the second, and that's hammered. And that's two to one, New York. Boone takes a strike. Nick Johnson hit a tailing fastball that didn't tail. That ball was straight as a string. You could see Lowe's reaction immediately lowering his head. Miller takes care of Boone. And there are two outs in the end. Think it might have been a slider? I think he's cutting it. He's, he's not going to cut it to the right. He's going to cut it to the left. I mean, that's not his pitch, but once in a while he'll throw it. Just a little, he threw one to Giambi earlier. Difference between a cut fastball and a slider is considerable. Yeah, slider's going to break a lot more. Cutter's going to be a slider break, and it's going to be a harder pitch. And a little later break, too. Later, yeah. Now with two out, here's the number nine hitter, Garcia. Kareem takes a strike. His cutter's probably going to be around 87, and his slider's probably going to be around 82. But left at about 130. Hard hit. Good play by Garcia Parra, who stays down on it, and the inning is over. A walk to start the inning. Then a force out. And then this. A ton of base runners for Boston so far, but the Yankees carry it two to one lead. Two to one on a two run shot in the bottom of the second. And now here in the third, it'll be the three, four, and five men for Boston. 
Garcia Parra, Ramirez, and David Ortiz against Pettit. That's strike one. First Yankee lead of these two games. Barrett the catcher for the Red Sox, talking it over with Derek Lowe. That dugout has seen the Boston Red Sox all over the bases, but they've only dented home plate once. And a walk and a blast put New York out in front as Garcia Parra takes the ball. Talked last night about Larry Lucchino, who's the president of this Boston Red Sox team. Describing the Yankees as the evil empire when they won the bidding war for Jose Contreras. Standing by with the principal owner of the Red Sox, John Henry, is our own Kenny Albert. Kenny? Joe, I'm with Red Sox owner John Henry. And John, your team president, Larry Lucchino, mm -hmm. has referred to the Yankees mm -hmm. as the, the evil empire. How has it been sitting here with Larry amongst fans of the evil empire? Well, I don't call him that. I, I think it's a, it's a great franchise, great tradition. They've, uh, they've got four rings in the last few years. It's, uh, but it's great to be here. A beautiful night in New York. Now you're a limited partner with the Yankees for over a decade. And your wildest dreams when you purchased the Red Sox less than two years ago. Could you ever have imagined this? Oh well, yes. After you could very well imagine on your way to a World Series, this would be a place you'd want to stop. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Joe. Kenny, thanks. One out, nobody on, and another pop up. This one into shallow right and Garcia recovers, gets there, two out. The reaction from Ramirez, who singled his first time up and is 29 out of 69 now after. That little pop up for the second out. He was disgusted, but major league hitters don't hit that ball hard often. That ball's actually too high, right around the letters. When you're talking about a, a, a pitcher who throws the ball up or a mistake, you're talking about one right in here. That ball was right here. It's too high. But even though he threw his bat, you could tell Manny that pitch was coming. And if he does hit it hard, he's going to pull it foul. Now it's Ortiz who drew a walk to load the bases in the first, but Millar popped up. And the Red Sox stranded three. Strike one. Last 78 games during the regular season, Ortiz hit 28 home runs. You talk about carrying an offense in a very good offense at that. But being a guy that this Boston Red Sox team relied on, Ortiz was that hitter. Once the Boston organization traded Shea Hillenbrand at the end of May to the Diamondbacks to get Young Hun Kim, who's not even active for this ALCS, Ortiz took over as the primary DH. Takes the ball, it's one and one. Look at what he's done this season. Career highs in home runs, RBIs, runs, batting average, hits, doubles. 18 game winning RBIs. Including that big game four victory against the Oakland A's in Boston last Sunday. The two out. One and two on Ortiz. That's the first time that Andy Pettit has gone thrown back to back fastballs inside the left handers tonight. And that's what he must do. Posada setting up inside and the Taylor tailing in on the hands of David Ortiz. Opposite way, Jeter. Down to the Red Sox for the first time tonight. One, two, three. Bottom of inning number three. Yankees bat. Top of the order coming up. Two to one, New York. With us, it's two to one. Yankees as we go to the bottom of the third. Top of the order. Soriano, Jeter, Giambi against Lowe. We're allowed a walk and a home run last inning. Ball 
Ball one. Soriano struck out his first time. Alfonso fifth this year in the AL with 38 home runs and fourth with 35 steals. This one's into left, not well hit. Manny Ramirez coming on. Nice play, one out. That will bring in Derek Jeter. And his numbers during the month of October are staggering. I'm not going to say the old Mr. October, but Reggie Jackson is always hanging around. We see him in Joe Torre's office before these games. And I wonder what he'll think of the new Mr. October with 107 hits as Jeter digs in. 0 for 5 in this ALCS. Reggie Jacks throwing out the first pitch last night here at Yankee Stadium. With one out. Ball one low and away. Now we said it last night. There may be shortstops more talented. Alex Rodriguez certainly. No Mark Garciaparra. Garciaparra perhaps. But nobody rises to the occasion of postseason baseball like Jeter. And this is a guy who's been involved in it from the very beginning of his big league career. One big hit after another. Tied up by Low in the count one and two. He and Joe Torrey are, are tethered at the hip. Joe Torrey's first year as a manager was 1996. Derek Jeter won the rookie of the year that year. Joe Torrey loves his enthusiasm, obviously his talent, his love of the game, his diligence. He's also been seen tethered to George Steinbrenner in the Congo line. As he's on with a little dribbler for a one out infield hit. And George was several people back, was he not? Well, yeah. There right. was some, there was some others tethered to Derek in that commercial. Miller had no chance to do anything with this, and it's one on one out for Giambi. Giambi walked his first time. We're really looking to settle in in the postseason and get into some kind of groove. We were here in game two of the division series when runners on at second and third. Minnesota Twins elected to pitch to Giambi instead of walking him to load the bases with one out. And he singled up the middle for his only two RBIs of this postseason. Strike one. It's a hard out for Low in this situation. You have to pitch Giambi inside. As Veritek out to talk to Derek. You have to pitch him inside, and it's hard for a sinker baller to get inside on a left-handed hitter unless it's a two-strike tail and fastball. Or something. Right. I mean, and like I said, I think the only reason he's throwing it in there is he doesn't want Jason to swing it. He wants to bring it back across the plate and get a called strike on. Kind of looked to me like Derek Lowe was upset about something. It wasn't yeah. just a strategic meeting between Veritek and Lowe. I think Veritek went out there to try to calm down Lowe a little bit for whatever reason. But looking in toward home plate either at the umpire or Giambi is the 0 1 pitch. Heads home. And a base hit into left field. One of the few times they'll go the other way. And it's first and second with only one out. That is a sweet piece of hitting by Jason Giambi. Sometimes if you take swings like this, that gets you out of slumps because of that front shoulder. You keep it in there. Really an outstanding sinker by Lowe, but taken the other way by Giambi. And 
now a big chance for the Yankees already up one with two on one out and Bernie Williams up. Right side base hit. Jeter coming home. The throw by Nixon. Too late. Three to one. Jeter, not the fastest of base runners. But his instincts are remarkable. If you're throwing to a base to try to throw out Derek Jeter, just forget it. Throw it to another base. He's been tagged out only 10 times the last four years. That's other than caught, caught stealings. It's a two-run Yankee lead, and we talk football. Fox NFL Sunday begins America's number one pregame show. Then the Buccaneers try to rebound from Monday's heartbreaking loss. They take on the Redskins. They have been a surprise so far this season. And speaking of surprises, the Dallas Cowboys host the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's the other New York-Boston battle. The Giants travel to New England. Our other regional action. It all begins noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Here's Posada. There's a strike. Derek Lowe is always one good sinker away from getting out of a jam. Looking for that double play ball. Giambi at second. Williams on it first. Hard hit. And Jackson drops it. Throw to second. Still safe. They had two shots and an out. And it's bases loaded one out, and Jackson's in the game for his defense. Yeah, they had the best shot for two outs, easily. Jackson trying to flip it before he had it. Yeah, I mean, he just wanted to get that double play, and, you know, he didn't make sure he caught it before he got it. I've done it. <laughs> it doesn't feel very good. But even after that, he had a chance to recover and get Williams going to second, and he short hopped Garcia Parra. Bernie Williams has to hold up at first base. Now the ball gets through. And it gets through Gar Shapara too. So the bases are loaded. It's an error on Damian Jackson. One out. And Matsui is at the plate. Strike one. Jeff Supon, the right-hander, the Red Sox got for the Pirates getting loose. To the right side, Millar will come home for the out. That's it, two out. Four out, three, two. The bases are loaded for Nick Johnson. That's what Booney and I were talking about the last inning. The first baseman or third baseman determining the speed of the ball and then coming home if it's hit too slowly. Well, I think in that situation, I think, I think Verite or uh, I'm sorry, Millar. He, if it's hit hard at him, I think he's still going home to first anyway, being right-handed instead of having to turn and throw to second. Giambi with an important hit. Jeter got this started with an infield hit, a slow roller down the third baseline. And now Johnson, who homered his first time up, bases loaded two out. Yankees up by two. Strike one. Last inning. A no doubter to right. Lowe has been stretching out that right shoulder after just about every pitch. One ball, one strike. And if he doesn't have all his stuff here tonight, who could claim him for the action he had in the division series? 
relief in game one, a start in game three, and the closer in essence in game five. Garcia Parra. Inning is over. So after all that, the Yankees come up with only one. One run on three hits plus an error. They strand three of left four. We go to the fourth, three to one, New York. Jackson apologizing to Derek Lowe. No need to apologize to anybody. If pitchers don't apologize for hanging sliders, you shouldn't have to apologize to them for making an error. No harm anyway, because uh, that error did not lead to a run. Millar now, who had a bases loaded opportunity his first time up and popped up, is at the plate leading off in the fourth. It's 3 to 1 New York. And one. It'll be Millar, then Veritek, then Nixon if anybody gets on Damian Jackson. Another pop up off the bat of Millar. Soriano. Waller. Here's Veritek. A double leading off in the second inning. It's followed by a hit by Nixon and a hit by Damian Jackson. A run was home, two on, nobody out. The Red Sox were up by one. Kapler bounced into a double play. Miller grounded out. I'll say again, we are led to believe that, and the word was hopefully, as the first pitch is outside for a ball to Veritek. Johnny Damon will play on Saturday. That according to manager Grady Little. He used that word. And if the way he took batting practice is any indication, I would say not only will he be in there on Saturday, but you can't really cross him off the list here tonight later on in the game. Johnny Damon has missed 32 games in his two years with the Red Sox. In those 32 games, the Red Sox have scored a run less in those 32 games. In each game, they've averaged a, a run less. That's how important he is to this offense. On two and one, Maritek hits a foul. Ooh, dangerous foul ball. And it's a 2 2 count. Let's check in with Kenny Albert. Kenny? Joe, I spoke with Johnny Damon after he took batting practice. He said it felt weird. He hit some hard, missed, hit a few. He's going to take live BP against pitchers tomorrow. Still targeting Saturday. Now, I asked him if he's going to shave his head. He said the guys are working on me, but it's a no-go. So a no-go for Damon on the head shaving. And no Mark Garcia Parr gets a pass because his wedding to Mia Hamm's coming up. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Another pop-up. Foul ground, Nick Johnson, two out. With the bases empty, Nixon's coming up. Now tomorrow, baseball's postseason continues at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific here on Fox. Game three of the NLCS. They're in Miami. The Cubs' Kerry Wood takes on the Marlins' Mark Redman. And that series is tied at a game apiece. Sports' biggest month of the year continues tomorrow, only right here on Fox. Two out, nobody on. Here's Nixon. Try to base it his first time up. Three of four in this series. He's starting to come back inside on left handers. He did it to David Ortiz. Now he does it to Nixon. A left-handed batter facing a left-handed pitcher has to have the fear of the tailing fastball. Otherwise, he could dive out over the plate. It's the thing. It's second time through the lineup, too. Mm -hmm. I think he wants to give these guys a different look. 3-0 the count on Nixon. You saw Damian Jackson is waiting on deck. Three and 
one. With the exception of very few left handed pitchers, Sandy Koufax comes to mind. If they constantly stay away, the left handed batters, the left hander will eventually get them. Koufax was overwhelming. On three and one. Full count. Inside a, corner. It's, it's just a totally different situation, lefty against lefty, than it is righty against righty, or any other situation. That's why the good left-handed hitters have to keep their shoulder in. That's why they're vulnerable inside. Uh, well, and also when the pitcher gets into a little bit of a, of a uh, bind, that's the safety to go, you know, to throw a strike in the outer half of the plate. Right. Nixon checked his swing on ball four in the dirt. So a two out walk in case fans wonder what the atmosphere is like when you meet with these managers before the game. These are two of the more laid back guys that you'll find a Grady little is laid back you would imagine in any circumstance. Mm -hmm. And if you wonder if Joe Torrey and the pressure cooker of New York and managing for George Steinbrenner and all the expectations big payroll hundred and eighty million dollar payroll what's his future. He's basically kicked back in his chair behind his desk just telling you what he thinks and he is in no way shape or form worried about this series or the immediate future with his spot with his Yankees team. And according to him all the stuff with Steinbrenner this year is no different than it's been in any other year. It's just that this season it was made more public and he had quite a few new players to try and introduce that to see what the temperature is like in the clubhouse from time to time and that's really his job to kind of keep that all separate from these players and that's why he's been so successful here in New York. No he balls two strikes on Jackson. He is one of the most unflappable people I have ever met. A lot goes on inside but not outside. Runner goes. Pitch in the dirt and a good pitch for Nixon to take off. He steals second. And the hit could make it a one run game. Good jump by Trot Nixon to take that base. If they're going to give it to you, take it. Actually, they're not giving it to him, but uh, I guess Andy Pettit didn't think Nixon would run. Jackson already has one RBI hit. Stays one and two. Three to one Yankees here in the fourth inning, game two, trying to even this series before Pedro Martinez and Roger Clemens hook up on late Saturday afternoon. Heat and Jackson could not catch up. The Red Sox are stranded five and after three and a half, trail by two. Back to the top, Soriano. It's three to one Yankees. Aaron Boone so far he is hitless in this series. 0 for four, and he takes a ball low and away. Joe Torre in our little managers' meetings directs a lot of his quotes toward you, Brett, and about managing your brother Aaron, saying, I know he's frustrated with the way he's hitting the ball. But he is so solid at third base and we've already seen him make a very good play to save a run. Back in the second inning on that ball dribbled by Miller. But he's going to keep sticking him out there. Until he gets into a groove as he comes up empty with a count one and two now. Derek Lowe. Well he's got the easier boon to manage. Well that's for sure. This guy conforms a little more. So he's here, got that going for him. Which is nice. Oh stop the conform. You're reading newspaper clips. No, I just uh, I know the both of you. You better now than I did before, and I'm more convinced now than ever. Boone's hit. 
And the leadoff man is on for the Yankees. Derek Lowe trying to come inside to Aaron and hits him. Uh, that was a double pop right there off of Aaron Boone's stomach to Baratek's shoulder. Ooh. Now Garcia. Kareem grounded out his first time. Here's a guy who started the season in Buffalo, was with Cleveland hitting 194. And then came to the Yankees at the end of June. Fifty two games with New York. Overall he hit 11 home runs. Drove in 35. Goes. Boone takes off, throw down is high. Stolen base, Aaron Boone. Aaron with eight stolen bases on the season. He was not caught. That may have been a hit and run. A lot of times when a, a pitcher throws it so far inside, you can't swing at it. It's almost self preservation. He had such a good jump, however, probably a straight steal. Now a 1 0. Garcia attempts a foul. Soriano on deck and then Cheater. Pettit seems to be finding his groove on the mound for the Yankees. Lowe is still searching for his. He walked. The leadoff man in the second gave up the two run homer to Johnson. Gave up three straight singles in the third to make it three to one. Two balls and a strike. Starter on Saturday. Back to Fenway Park where they gave Roger Clemens a standing ovation. What they thought would be his last appearance there. He's coming back as Garcia advances Boone to third, one out now. Well, Saturday will definitely be his last appearance there. Although I've heard you head, John. You're not totally convinced. I, I, I'm not. I think December January rolls around. I think there is a chance that Roger Clemens could change his mind and perhaps pitch next year and that's just an opinion. Well, we've talked earlier in the season that if he does walk away he is going to be one of the few athletes to walk away when they are still extremely effective. You think of the game he pitched just last week. On that Saturday at the Metrodome, he was overpowering. He the hardest throwing retired pitcher in the history of baseball. Soriano now with a runner at third, one out. Strike one. Roger will probably sign up with one of those Saturday beer league teams and just blow people away. <laughs> Field is in as strength two comes into Soriano. There's that tailing fastball. More of a tailor than a sinker. Soriano 91 runs batted in during the regular season. Runner at third, one out here. The Yankees already up two. 
chased it. Two out. And a big strikeout for Derek Lowe. Well, was that a surprise? It's the first, uh, that's the first slider he's thrown tonight. He misses with the first fastball. Beg your pardon. He hit with the first fastball. So good morning, good afternoon, and good night. But that was the first slide slider that we have seen from Derek Lowe. Totally fooled Soriano and us too. Yeah. You save it for the right time. Yeah. The Yankees now one for six with runners in scoring position. And it's up to Jeter looking for the two out RBI hit. Rounds to Garcia Barra. Good work by Lowe to get around the hit batsman the stolen base Yankees had a runner at second nobody out and do not score Boone still three to one after four back after this from your local Fox station. Coming up on Fox 25 News a frightening story tonight out of Wellesley police say suspects broke into a home armed with a machete. We're in the fifth inning. Andy Pettit back to the hill, and he will deal with the top of the order for Boston. That means Kapler, Miller, and Garcia Parra. Kapler is one for two, but the time he was retired was in a key spot. He was up with runners at first and second. Nobody out. A run already home. And he bounced into a 6-3 double play. He takes a strike over the outside corner. Kapler, a guy who was released by Colorado, signed by Boston. Had a big opening weekend and debut with the Red Sox. Popping a couple of home runs. But overall with Boston, hit a total of four and a 291 average. It's 0-2. And a tap foul, and Posada was going to let it roll in case it decided to hop on the other side of the line. Yeah, let it develop. Just because it hits foul doesn't mean it can't roll fair. Watch Posada. It's right behind the plate. Jorge was going to pick it up, and he thought. On 0 and 2. I heat Kepler is down and that is strikeout number three for Andy Pettit. High fastball got Damian Jackson to end the fourth inning. Now to open the fifth a high fastball. Bill Miller ended up winning the American League batting title. You see as the Red Sox hit the ball this season and those major league records will have a chance to go back to it if not they set major league records and extra base hits total bases slugging percentage and you know how in baseball talk they always say well it's not like they were beaten by the 27 Yankees well, they took care of a record that was held by the 27 Yankees with a slugging percentage of 491 29 home runs in 20 games against the Yankees and that includes the three that they hit here last night. One and two on Miller. Two and two. That little space that Pettit uses to peek in at the catcher is getting smaller and smaller. Cut a little hole in his glove. I was thinking the same thing. I mean, how does he pick up his catcher? It's not a bad idea because by having it in that little slit, you rule out the hitter. Better if a pitcher plays a, an elevated game of catch with his catcher. Forget about the hitter. 2 2. Miller stays up there. The 
There's no doubt that Andy Pettit has settled into a nice groove. A walk in the fourth inning. Other than that, he has been dominant since early trouble. Miller jammed and a short hop picked up by Jeter. Two out. Good play by Derek Jeter. Even though that ball rolling around in the glove, he never really had a, a good grip of the ball in the glove. It's Garcia Parra now with all those idiosyncrasies that he has before getting in. In fact, Derek Jeter had a little imitation of Nomar Garcia Parra in the All Star game a few years ago. 1999, what a memorable night that was at Fenway. Ted Williams coming onto the field. One of those nights you never forget. That scene right around the home plate area with all of the All Stars crowding around Ted Williams. Garcia Parra fouls away strike two. We go back to that season and it was Garcia Parra who started. Jeter replaced him and as a little tribute to him did the Garcia Parra footwork in the batter's box. Two and two on no more. Line drive base hit. Reaching for it. Garcia Parra hit it hard, pulled it into left, and it's a two out single, and that brings in Manny Ramirez. Take some strong hands when your rear end goes one way, and the bat hit is right on the button. Ramirez. Manny popped out to right his last time up. Singled his first time. Takes a ball. Ramirez finished second in the American League, hit 325, seventh with 37 home runs. As we've told you, he has handled Andy Pettit in his career. On the outside corner, it's one and one. You could put a lot of other left handers in the American League in that category. He led all right handed batters, all batters, period, hitting left handed pitching this year. He eats left handers up. With a short lead, and in this spot, you wouldn't figure, or rather, Garcia Parra, in this spot, you wouldn't figure he's going anywhere. No. With a home run threat of Manny Ramirez at the plate. One ball, one strike, one on, two out. That's out of play, strike two. You can see the frustration on Ramirez. He shook his head the last time up. And now this time, upset with himself. Into right field, Garcia going back. Hang over. A two out hit by Garcia Parra and Kareem Garcia back to take care of Ramirez and the Red Sox in the fifth.
We've seen McCartney in those seats. We've seen Denzel. And now we see Chris Rock. Hanging out watching the Yankees. Timeshare seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a celebrity, you got a shot at yeah. purchasing a piece of that seat. Jason Giambi first up for the Yankees against Derek Lowe, and he takes a strike. That's John McEnroe. For those of you who can recognize guy. him. <laughs> A one pitch. He will make you watch a tennis match. Yes, he will. The Donald is down to our left. The Donald can only be Donald Trump. Yes. There's only one, the Donald. One ball, one strike. Bernie Williams will follow and then Posada. Right back to low. What a play. Not that play. Talk about sucking it up. Man, check this out. A one hopper, a scorcher back through the box. Look at that. Little flip. Nothing to it, huh, Derek? Piece of cake. I don't like those plays. <laughs> You're a hitter, of course not. Almost was... literally took the glove off his hand. It and did. Looked like a able to get the out. Looked like a Sesta hanging onto his left hand. Here's Williams. One for two tonight. Ball one. I was going to say, Joe, uh, speaking of celebrities that come to Yankee Stadium, I'll never forget Paul McCartney directing traffic after game five of the 2001 series. About 40 yards from the press entrance. <laughs> there's, there's Paul McCartney directing traffic. Maybe you have to do a little work to sit in those seats. Well, well, perhaps. Nothing comes for free. Clean up the dugout. Whatever it is. Rudolph Giuliani put him to work two years ago. He's here too. Right on cue. One ball, one strike, one out, nobody on, and Bernie Williams takes ball two. the most rabid fan of all the celebrity stars that come here. Billy Crystal, a huge baseball fan. Mayor Bloomberg. Billy Crystal saw David Ortiz yesterday and he said he had a tattoo as big as he was. <laughs> Three balls and a strike on Bernie Williams. Low deals and a line drive in the left is going to get down. And scoop to the wall. Bernie Williams will have at least two. It's a one out double. Saw Jason Giambi take that sinker the other way. And Brett, you mentioned uh, second time through the order. This is the third time through the order. And left handed hitters in particular become more comfortable with that sinker. Well, yeah, I mean, I think as a pitcher, you know, that's what I was saying. When a pitcher needs a strike, 90% of the time, they're going to go to the, the outside part of the plate. I mean, that's a safety zone because most guys want to pull balls. I mean, but if you haven't got to hit a couple times up, I, I think you're going to look to hit the ball the other way. That wasn't a bad pitch. No. It was just a good piece of hitting. Mm -hmm. Now it's Posada with Williams at second, one out. A lot of money the other way. Off the end of the bat, shallow left. Plenty of time for Ramirez, two out. Uh, of all the pitches that Lowe has thrown tonight, that was the toughest to pick up. It looked like a splitter or a straight change. Sometimes that, that sinker will do that. I guess it was a sinker. But it totally I, you know, fooled I, I Posada. Didn't, I didn't see, you can tell by the speed. If the speed came up, I didn't see it. Posada way out in front. I think it was. I think it was just what we talked about in the opening was uh, just taking a little bit off that sink, mm -hmm. giving you a little different, you know, different right, look. Yeah, maybe brought it down to 85 versus, you know, it's a BP sinker. 
Now it's Matsui with a runner at second, two out. Ball one. So far, the Yankees one for eight with runners in scoring position tonight. Matsui trying to change that. Time's called at the plate by Veritek. This is about as subdued an ALCS Yankee Stadium crowd as we have heard in a long while. And I don't know if it's the pace of the game or the way Bo is delivering these pitches, the time elapsing between them. But while this thing started out hot and heavy and the crowd was making a lot of noise, they have to be urged on by the stadium sound system to make some noise as the count is one and one on Matsui. I'll bet you if Matsui gets a hit, you'll hear. Well, there's no doubt. Or is that stating the obvious, Joe? Yeah. It's all right. We accept that. Runner at second, two out. And a ground ball right side. There's your base hit. Here comes Williams. Throw by Nixon, cut off. Run scores. Matsui hung up. And the inning comes to a close. So the Yankees add to their lead with a two-out RBI base hit by Matsui. It's now four to one after five here in game two of this ALCS. Hideki Matsui with a fine piece of base running as the Yankees exchange an out for a run. You can see Lee Mazzilli motioning to Matsui to keep going. Bernie Williams scoring in the foreground. Now Matsui in a rundown, but they got a run for that out. And now in the sixth inning, it's a three run Yankee lead. David Ortiz is first up against Andy Pettit. Ball one. That was one of those plays where everybody did what they were supposed to do. Matsui got a hit. Trot Nixon hit the cutoff man. Millar cut it off. Bernie Williams got a good jump from second base, and Matsui got in a rundown. 1 0 pitch. Ortiz slices one down the left field line. Pretty well hit. Back is Matsui on the run. And he has it for the out. One away. That was a terrific play because you really don't know where you are down in that left field corner. He had to go back and over. Nicely done by Matsui. Watch him go to the track and then come over. Well done. Now Millar steps in over two. Strike one. Millar has popped up twice tonight. Once to short, once to second. One and one. Pedro Martinez will be on the mound on Saturday afternoon taking on Roger Clemens. Pedro, in case you're wondering, Nine and eight in his career against the Yankees. A very good ERA. The matchup for Saturday. The Yankees trying to send this series tied at a game apiece to Fenway Park. Big part of this game with Andy Pettit pitching well could be Mariano Rivera. Joe Torre said when asked if he was going to pitch two innings tonight, he said absolutely. Two out. Our sprint virtual manager answer a question which curse is worse the Bambino with the Red Sox or the Billy Goat with the Cubs. And you have answered the curse of the Bambino because 
If for no other reason, it gets a lot more play. Yes. I've never heard of the Billy Goat. Tim? Well, my, my understanding is that in 1945, a man wanted to take a goat to a game in Chicago. Which now, is natural. He, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, your pet goat. And he was not allowed entrance to the ballpark. And he was quoted in the paper the next day saying the Cubs will never win another World Series. Well, they haven't won one since. That's the Billy Goat curse, as I understand it. That happened back in 1945. I mean, he really liked the goat. That's lined into left field off the bat of Veritek. A home run that makes it a two run game. A line drive home run hit by Veritek to make it 4 2 here in the sixth. Third home run of this postseason for the Boston catcher, and with two out, it's 4 2. That was a tracer to left center field. <laughs> Veritek trying to do all he can to pump up his teammates down in that dugout. And prior to that shot, had been shut down by Andy Pettit. Again, a cutter. Andy Pettit tried to get inside. Over the inside part of the plate, lasered to left. Nixon's backed out of there. One ball, one strike. Can you imagine that exchange? I'll take two seats. Two of your best. One for me and one for my goat. Might need two seats for the goat. And Ed Hillel. <laughs> Here comes Mel Stottlemyre. <laughs> Just say it again. No, I can't. I, I, I'm Ed hillel out. Stottlemyre's going to come out and talk as the count's gone to one and two. And <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. I don't either. You're hung up on Ed Hill. <laughs> it just gives a warm feeling to them. Jose Contreras is getting <laughs> loose for the Yankees, and they're, I would imagine, buying time. Kind of a strange time to visit with a count of one and two and two out, nobody on here in the inning. It is. The Yankees are four outs away. From Mariana Rivera, if they have a lead. Andy Pettit, a potential free agent at the end of the year. We asked him about what's to come in his career. The kids start getting a little bit older. You know, I have three kids, they're getting at the age now where they want to be home. You know, they want to be in Texas and, you know, they want to do their stuff. So, you know, you're away from your family a lot. You come here to New York and the atmosphere and, and you come here and you play in front of these fans and the crowds and being able to get to October, it, 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 you know, it makes it all worth the while, that's for sure. Buck Showalter earlier in this postseason said it's assumed that he is in play for us with the Texas Rangers. As Nixon checks his swing and the count's full, he said we are going to drastically cut payroll and unless he's willing to accept a deal that would be below market value. People can't assume that we're just going to jump on Andy Pettit because we need pitching and he's from Texas. It's stunning to me that they would even consider letting him walk away from here. I don't think they can. 3 2 pitch. Nixon stays up there with a foul tip. Roger Clemens retiring. David Wells, what, 39? Joe Torrey's insistence on starting pitching. David Wells will be the starter in game four. That'll be Sunday night. John Burkett will be his opponent. A 3-2 pitch to Trot Nixon with two out. In the air to center field and Williams back to get it. In the inning for the Red Sox. A home run with two out by Jason Veritek. Boston creeps a little closer. Bottom of the sixth inning.
After this from Baratek, it's 4-2. First pitch, Nick Johnson takes, and at the knees for strike one. Whatever happens here in the sixth inning, if Derek Lowe can keep it close, we are headed for a very important for the Red Sox seventh inning. Already, they've had Contreras, the Yankees, getting loose out in their bullpen. There is out number one. That bullpen has some question marks in it getting to Mariano Rivera. Rivera will pitch two innings if the Yankees get the opportunity tonight. We saw Contreras getting loose, and I'm not so sure, guys, that Jose Contreras hasn't shot right to the top of the list in the setup role for Joe Torre in front of Nelson and any left-hander he can find yeah, out there. Yeah, he was he was right there. In the hole, Garcia Parra with a back good play, two out. He was right uh, at the top, if not at the top, hovering around the top. And that performance last night against the Red Sox with that split finger fastball, I mean, that was impressive. And I don't know, I don't know how much the Red Sox have faced him this year. Uh, I didn't see him at all, but it, but it was either. That split figure was as nasty as it looked, or these guys just didn't know what to expect from him. From what I've heard from the hitters uh, with whom I've talked in the American League, it's as nasty as it looked. That was Jeff Weaver, by the way. And Jeff is not on the postseason roster. Two out, nobody on, and Kareem Garcia is at the plate. He takes strike one. Oh, he is. I, I'll correct that. He is on the postseason roster. Chris Hammond's out. My, my correction. Two out, nobody on, no balls, one strike. Weaver's only role, unless a game were to get to deep into extra innings, is that of a long reliever in case a starter has trouble early. Otherwise, he's going to be in that same position we just saw him kicked back in the bullpen. Yeah. With two out, nobody on. Here comes a 1 1 pitch to the number nine hitter, Kareem Garcia. Damian Jackson takes care of that. It's a quick and easy sixth inning for Derek Lowe. We go to the seventh. It will be Jackson, Kapler, Miller coming up. A two run game back after this from your local Fox station. Seventh inning now of game two. It's Yankees four, Red Sox two. Red Sox lead this series one game to none, and it's Damian Jackson in to lead it off. Jackson, Kapler, and Miller. Ball one from Pettit, and there is Contreras getting loose. In for a strike, it's one and one. On the corner, it's one and two. 107 pitches tonight for Andy Pettit. Andy's gone away and away to run the count to one and two. That cut fastball. Jackson set up for that pitch inside. Down out of the strike zone. A little squirter to Soriano. One away here in the seventh. Let's check in with Jeannie Zelasco for a game break. Jeannie. Uh, yes, the goat is in. Slam and Sammy is out. Uh, he is not alone. We've seen 13 home runs in the NLCS. 14 is the record for the entire series. This one's been fun. Tomorrow, baseball's postseason continues, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, with Game 3 of the NLCS as the scene ships to Miami, where that Cubs. Carrie Wood takes the mound against the Marlins' Mark Redmond. Marlins, Cubs, and Goats. Oh, my. It's kind of frightening. There's Kapler, the leadoff hitter in the lineup. And I think you could look back at that at bat by Kapler in the second inning when Andy Pettit was really struggling. 
Kapler with two on and nobody out bouncing into a double play and now batting with one out nobody on and a 1 0 pitch. One ball one strike. With Miller on deck. One and two on Kapler. Two and two. Strikeouts for Pettit as he tries to get through this seventh inning. <laughs> that cut fastball diving out of the strike zone to Kapler. You could almost see that pitch. What happens on that pitch, and we talked about it before, pitcher puts pressure on the middle finger and actually cuts through the ball. Miller takes the ball high. From a left handed pitcher, it goes in. To a right handed batter and a great shot right there. Look at the middle finger of Andy Pettit. You could almost feel Pettit cutting through that pitch. Two and oh on Miller. Now two and one. The big bat of Nomar Garcia Parra waits on deck. Three and one. If you have Nomar on deck, happy to have that black bat back in his hands. Last night he was using a white bat, tonight. Back to Old Faithful, and he's two out of three. Now he's coming up, and what I was leading to is you wonder how much longer Joe Torre is going to go with Pettit. This could be it. Talk about on cue. Nice call, partner. Contreras is coming in. Garcia Parra is coming up. A man on, two out, and the Yankees leading by two in the seventh. This crowd and these Yankees appreciate the work of Andy Pettit. <laughs> Another big game in the books for Andy Pettit. He turned in a good one in game two of the division series. He's done it since the Yankee run began back in 1996. And he gives way to Jose Contreras, who last night pitched one inning and struck out the side. Garcia Parra up the tying run at the plate, and he pops it up on the first pitch. Johnson, inning over. <laughs> Quick and easy for Contreras and Andy Pettit. And the Yankees are through the top of the seventh. Time to stretch here in New York. Pettit did his good work tonight. Yankees lead by two.
Talk about a guy who never has an off night. Ronan Tynan nails that night after night after night. The league championship series on Fox is brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. We talked earlier in the night about last night's disputed home run down that right field line. It was touched by Josh Mandelbaum. We had reaction from Ed Hillel. Our crack staff of reporters bring you fair and balanced reporting. And this was taken earlier today right on that pole. Big story at Yankee Stadium is whether Todd Walker did hit the foul pole, yes or no, last night. And who are we going to turn to but Fox Sounds of the Game. This foul pole is mic'd tonight identically to how it was mic'd in every postseason game. If the ball did hit the pole, you would have heard a sound like this. And to prove it to you, let's close my mic right now. At worst, if it was deflected off the hand of a fan, it would have given you a light tap like this. So definitively, this Fox Audio investigation will tell you that Todd Walker's ball did not hit the foul pole last night, and that is Fox Sports Sounds of the Game. Joe and Tim. Very well done. And there it is. That ball never hit the pole. No, oh, come on. What do you mean, come on? Come on. Come on. You know what it cost to bring Matt in here to do that? I do not. Where did he? I don't know where he came from. That's one of our guys. Get around and meet the guys, Tim. <laughs> what have we been doing this since '96? Matt, Matt, I'm sorry. The point is, they listen to every audio channel. The ball never hit the foul pole, but as we said there graphically, it didn't hit the pole. But it would have hit the pole if not for the interference by Matt, Josh Mandelbaum. Matt, meet I'm Matt. Sorry. There he's right there. He's eight inches away from it. Nice to meet you. That's a good job too. And that's Thank Al you. behind him. How come we've never met? You've never introduced yourself to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bottom of the seventh inning here with the Yankees batting up by two. And Derek Lowe has turned in a solid start but is on the short end of a 4-2 score. Soriano, Jeter, and Giambi. That's foul. I would say Soriano was ready for that pitch from Derek Lowe and pulled it a little too soon. It's 0 1. Looks like Mariana Rivera is loosening up for the Yankees. Try to get the last six outs. They like Contreras. But they don't like him more than the guy that's getting ready for the eighth inning. Well, I think that's that's a weapon that not too many teams have. It's the luxury of being able to bring in the closer of Mariano's caliber and uh, to be able to go two innings anytime. That's rolled over to third. It's a foul ball. And when you talk about more than one inning. I mean, he does two innings like it's no big deal. Well, I mean, he's one of the few guys that can do that. 21 of his 27 postseason saves have been for an inning plus. And we all remember in 96, it was Rivera for the seventh and eighth, and Wetland, who was the MVP of that 96 World Series, for the ninth. So they turned it into basically a six inning game. As that misses outside from below. And it's two and two with Sauerbeck getting loose for the Red Sox in their pen. And then Wetland left the Yankees after 96, and the Yankees turned to Mariano Rivera, and he is the factor that separates the Yankees bullpen from the other two. Yeah. One hop, ball comes back on Millar, and he's able to get to the base before Soriano one out. I mean, when Rivera and and I've been watching his last few outings, he's got it going, and he's he's throwing like he's very capable of. And when you get to a postseason, basically it turns it into, for the Yankees, a seven inning game. But all you heard around here earlier in the year was that Mariano Rivera was losing it. Well, I was facing him early in the year, and I didn't I didn't feel anything was lost. You know, I mean, he's, he might have lost a mile an hour or two off his fastball, but, but really that's not big of a deal when you're throwing mid-90s. In my view, it was foolish talk 
in the New York area. I, I remember getting the question asked to me after we faced him here uh, early in the year. People who simply did not know. They based it on the results of a few ground balls through the infield. Toppers down the third baseline. Little flares in the outfield. Just talk to the hitters, right, Brett, around the American League, and they'll tell you whether Rivera still has it or not. He blew two saves this season against Boston. And it appears that it will be a six out. At least that'll be the attempt by Rivera. A six out save here tonight. Cheater at the plate, one out, nobody on. And Derek Lowe continues to turn in solid work. Two balls and a strike. I would imagine Scott Sauerbach is getting ready for that man right there, Jason Giambi. Then you've got the two switch hitters who are more dangerous left handed after Giambi, so this could be it for Derek Lowe. Two and two. Lowe has allowed four runs on six hits while the Red Sox against Pettit had two runs on nine hits. But six of those hits came in the first two innings. Two balls two strikes. Full count. Side Miller to his left. Two out. And while all eyes are on the edge of that dugout, we remind you Major League Baseball is giving away World Series tickets for life and other great prizes. Winning hologram numbers will be announced during games one through four of the 2003 World Series on Fox. Visit your neighborhood Radio Shack store for your chance to win. There is no move for Scott Sauerbach to pitch to Giambi. Perhaps there would have been one if Jeter's on. The shift on on the infield. The outfielders spread way out for Boston defensively. Up scope. 2 and 0 on Giambi. I'd say, Timmy, if this is probably his last hitter, I would think. If Giambi reaches, he'll probably turn Bernie around. If you're going to do that, why not bring in Sauerbach? No situation. Nobody on base. And Derek still throwing the ball well. He's 3 and 0 on Giambi. With two out, nobody on. We might get to see. We might. He's swinging here. Oh man, how can you take that pitch? Why? You got a big, why? You know, it's three. Here's here's why. Down the line. Why here's not? why on a 3-0 count. Now, why am I going to swing 3-0 when he just threw me three balls? I'm going to let him walk me. Now, two out, especially, on. especially when I know I'm going to get the same pitch 3-1. Well, we'll see. Outside corner. And it was a slider. It was outside corner, so he didn't get the same pitch. I'm wrong again. <laughs> Gee, what am I going to do with my car? Not now. This guy on. hasn't played in years, and he's showing me up. <laughs> it's the makeup that's getting. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, that's that would be my approach in the box. If I got a guy out there throwing, I know I'm going to get a fastball 3-1, or think I'm going to. I'm going to take the 3-0. Base hit as a result. He he was doing. Anyway, on a 3 2 pitch, and we'll see if Sauerbeck's coming in to take on Bernie Williams. And I'm right again. You are indeed. Well, what a quick rally by you. 
Yay for me. I am on fire. You're one for one. Timmy, you want to get into a discussion about this? Not anymore. Okay. The definitive word for the all-star second baseman for the Mariners wearing makeup here tonight. I, what are you talking about? Hey, let's be honest with the people of America. <laughs> you don't roll out of bed looking that bronzed. It, it looked like oh Brady, no it looked like Brady went out there oh, and asked no. Lowe whether it, whether he wanted to stay in the game whether he still thought he had it if that's the case and you know what these Red Sox players are like if you ask you know what answer you're going to get yeah yeah I mean why is Sauerbach warming up why swim 3-0 because it's a chance to put another now, marker now, on how the board it's 314 down the line. Well, what if you're, what if you, okay, now if you got second and third, no outs. Now, my best chance of getting a fastball is 3 0 with a base open, right? So now I'm going to swing 3 0. Because 3 1, who knows? You might try to trick me. We'll talk about this later. Bernie Williams. Jimmy, I'm going to have to teach you a lesson. Off the inside <laughs> corner, ball one. But you brought up the, I think, the most important point. If you're not going to bring Sauer back in for Giambi, Okay, but if Giambi reaches with a hit and you have your choice to turn Bernie Williams around and have him bat right handed and you don't do it, why is Sauerbeck getting loose? I think I think Timmy had it. Or did you say it, Joe? Doesn't matter. When he went to a team here. When he went out to the mound, I think he gave uh, Lowe the option of you want this guy. If he saw any any negativity from, from Lowe, I think I think you would have seen the change made. Two balls, no strikes, one on, two out. And now it's 3 0. Oh. Well, the one guy he will not, I'm probably wrong about this too, but the one guy he will not give the 3 0 oh hit sign to is Bernie Williams. Joe Torrey rarely does that. We talked earlier about he doesn't have Bernie hit and run, and he doesn't give him the 3 0 oh hit sign. Posada, another switch hitter on deck. Ball four. He was swinging too, wasn't he? <laughs> You're wrong again. I'm wrong. 0 for three this inning. Hang with him. Well, there's some there's some guys that do not like to hit 3-0. You true. feel as if, man, if I swing 3-0, I better do something big. Brady Little's coming out to make the pitching change. Sauerbeck is coming in. We're going to have a pinch runner. Giambi's going to be lifted. So all sorts of moves with two on, two out in the seventh of a 4-2 game. David DeLucci is the pinch runner out at second base for Giambi. Bernie Williams on at first. And Sauerbeck is into the action. Jorge Posada at the plate, but he brings Sauerbeck in in a spot where a base hit adds a precious run for the Yankees. 4-2 here in the seventh. And a ball inside. Tim, I, I've worked with you long enough to know that you and I agree that the Red Sox and Grady Little went with Derek Lowe at least one batter too long. I, I think so. I mean, to me, if, if Sauerbeck, the left-hander, is warming up, he's got to pitch to Giambi with two out, nobody on, and not get in a situation like this. A 1-0 pitch is hammered into left center field. Back is Kepler. This ball is up against. Two runs are going to score, and the Yankees tack on two big ones. It's 6 2. See where Veritek is setting up, and Scott Sauerbach, who has had a tough time with his control and location since coming over from Pittsburgh, right down the pipe. Now Matsui takes a strike. A 
Matsui one for three tonight. That gets away from Veritek, and Posada will scoop the third. Probably a pass ball on Jason Veritek, a ball that sailed a little bit on him right at the end. Plus, he's sitting inside. The pitch is away, and more of an indication how Sauerbeck is missing and how far he's missing. It is a pass ball. And it's a runner at third, two out for Matsui. Strike two. Now a four run lead with a chance for another. And Contreras may stay in the game. Two balls, two strikes. That's an interesting point and certainly a possibility. The Yankees have taken it out of save range with the four run lead. But then the question is save or no save. How much do you want to play around with game two. Right, especially, with, especially with an off day tomorrow. Now it's three and two on Matsui. Runner at third two out three two pitch. Sauerbeck walks the lefty Matsui and has another one Nick Johnson coming up. Johnson is homer tonight only his second hit of this postseason. We saw all those uh, gesticulations that Baratek was going through. Those were for the middle infielders, just in case Matsui tries to steal. What Baratek's going to do with the ball? I don't think he'll be running here anyway. Let's see. A strike on the inside corner to Nick Johnson. Runs put up on the board by New York here in the seventh inning. A two out hit by Giambi, a walk to Bernie Williams, then the pitching change, and then Posada, a two run double. A pass ball, a walk followed, and now it's 0 2 on Nick Johnson. Sauerbeck drops down, and Johnson hangs in enough to get a piece of it. How could the Pirates not be in the postseason? How did they not run away with the NL Central? Pirates are Cincinnati. <laughs> You've got Sauerbeck on the mound. Simon is involved. Lofton is involved. Aramis Ramirez, part of the Cubs. Mike Williams was in the stretch drive with the Phillies. That is a Got a foot. Joe West, the third base umpire. Aaron Boone, the third baseman with the Yankees. With Cincinnati. Scott Williamson, the lever for the Sox with Cincinnati. Breaking ball is grounded on two hops to Jackson. With that, the seventh inning is history, but not before the Yankees get two more. Question is, will it be Contreras or Rivera? The answer to the bottom of the seventh is the Yankees get two and lead by four. Manny Ramirez first up, and it is Jose Contreras back to the mound with Rivera ready if needed. 
for either part of this eighth or the ninth as a strike is poured into Ramirez. It'll be Manny, then David Ortiz, then Kevin Millar. The heart of this Boston lineup. One of the reasons why the Yankees locked up Jose Contreras on a four year deal was because he had pitched in so many big games in the Cuban national team. They had success with El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, and they opened the bank vault for Contreras, who features a devastating split finger pitch. And that was it right there. This ball just drops out of nowhere. You see a controlled great hitter like Manny Ramirez take that swing. That's an indication of how much that ball dips. Ramirez singled off Contreras last night. Two and two. 97 miles per hour after an 82 mile an hour split finger pitch. Full count. On three and two. One out. One away here in the top of the eighth. Let's check in for another game break with Jeannie Zelasco. That could be bad news for the Marlins. They think the Cubs lumber was tough. How about this wood? Carrie Wood. Tomorrow baseball's postseason continues 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Game three of the NLCS as the scene shifts to Miami. Carrie Wood taking the mound for the Cubs against Mark Redmond, the home of the World Series and the GOAT. Jeannie, thanks. That matchup of Wood and Redmond. You look at that last pitch that was blown by the bat of Manny Ramirez. Wobbling around in the glove of Jorge Posada and it ended up in the web and Ramirez a strikeout victim. Ortiz takes strike one. Kerry Wood in that divisional series against Atlanta 2-0. His two starts, winning the decisive game five. An ERA under two. He piled up the strikeouts as David Ortiz gets a whiff of one from Contreras. A little more animation here at Yankee Stadium. Could be a purpose to that high inside fastball. Probably is. Ortiz straightened up. A guy like Ortiz is at seven home runs against the Yankees this season. If it was unintentional, it came at a good time for the Yankees to let Ortiz and the Red Sox know that they're not playing around. Well, on Saturday, you're going to see a few hitters straightened up too with Pedro Martinez and Roger Clemens pitching against one another. 2 1 to Ortiz. That's 3 and 1. Pedro Martinez earlier this season hit two of the Yankees best Soriano and Jeter as Ortiz pops it up Aaron Boone that's out number two we go back to July it's Soriano on the hand and then hit Jeter. Trip to the hospital after the game and minimal time was missed. That was a game won by Andy Pettit and the Yankees two to one. I, I believe that was the last regular season game played between these two 
teams at Yankee Stadium. With two out, Millar takes a strike. Oh, he's throwing a cutter too. That's a new pitch. The cutter. Veritek on deck. It's 6 2 Yankees here in the eighth. Millar, pretty good rip. But got under it. And Jeter wants it. Inning over. Four faced by Jose Contreras, and all four retired. Bottom of the eighth. Here in the Bronx. Beautiful night, 67 degrees. It's 6 2 Yankees. League Championship Series on Fox brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By the new film from Quentin Tarantino, Kill Bill, Volume 1, in theaters everywhere. Starting Friday, October 10th, rated R by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by Old Navy Painter's Pants, they'll work for you. Coming up next, late local news, except for those of you on the West Coast. Arnold Schwarzenegger has said that you cannot have your late local news coming up after this game, so we won't allow it. Dad misses down and in for ball one. Arnie. It's one of the new changes. Aaron Boone, Kareem Garcia, and Alfonso Soriano. Bronson Arroyo is on the mound for Boston, taking over for Sauerbeck, who did not fare well. A lot of two out, two run double. Walked the lefty Matsui, but Johnson grounded out to end what was a two run seventh for New York. Big break to that pitch. One out as Boone strikes out. Still hitless in this series. In tonight's game summary brought to you by Nissan. The starters, Pettit struggled early. But settled down after the first two. Johnson a two-run shot. Veritek homered. Red Sox seven straight losses in game two of postseason series. And Ed Hillel and Josh Mandelbaum <laughs> not present, but still think Walker home run was foul from game one that brought to you by Nissan and there's Rivera getting loose and even though Contreras is rolling if nothing else they want to get Rivera some work Been in the game since Saturday went two innings at the Metrodome that day saving the game for Roger Clemens I think too the postseason that that three run lead when the closer comes in I think that changes and I think they treat a four run lead like a three run. You got to win this. It's not about the numbers or whether you get the save or not. So with two out nobody on as Clemens is sure at some point lately pondering what's to come on Saturday back at Fenway. Where he was saluted. His last start there on his way out actually came back out and acknowledged the crowd. He'll be matched up with Pedro Martinez, the same matchup we had in a game three back in 99. And Pedro Martinez and the Red Sox won it 13 to 1. With all the hype. Now Soriano is hit. And don't think that that won't get the Yankees and Clemens' attention. So Ortiz was buzzed, and now Soriano. Yeah, if this wasn't intentional, it appeared intentional because David Ortiz, Contreras, now watch Soriano look out at Arroyo. Now he'll go to first, but wear that on Saturday. I don't know. I don't know if there's much behind that. I don't know what, either, what is the reason? But it's the appearance. Yeah. Sometimes you never know until you talk to a, to a, a, a young pitcher. But this guy hit batsmen versus each other. 23 to 50. Did I read that right? You did. You could bet Soriano's going to be taking off. This is going to be one of those steals of vengeance right here. He's mad. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> 
Alex Jeter at the plate. And he pulls back from strike one. Let's go down to Kenny Albert. Well, Joe, uh, obviously we're not sure if Arroyo hit Soriano on purpose, but as Soriano started down towards first, catcher Jason Veritek tapped him on the back a couple of times as if to say no hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. After a bruise and a lump. There's a strike and it's 0 and 2 on Jeter. And again, I mean, whether it's intentional or not, there are the Pats. The appearance will be that after Ortiz got one up and in from Contreras, whether it's coincidence or not, yeah. minutes later, Soriano gets drilled with two out and nobody on. On 0 and 2. It's part of the game. I got no problem with it. When you're not keep it away drilled. from my head. <laughs> I don't mind getting drilled. That's part of it. <laughs> it really is. I'm gonna remind you of that someday. We oh, both I'm are. Just a tough guy. The one-two pitch is down and in. I'll tell you Jeter. what, he drills, but I guarantee I don't make it out. Look at it that way. Well, to Soriano's credit, keep it away from my head, though. Yeah, and the pitch to Ortiz was chin high. Yeah, but it was chin high. It was out over the plate, though, if you look at the replay. It wasn't that close to his head. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Cheater strikes out, and we move into the night. Rivera's been getting ready. He's coming in at 6 2 New York after eight here in game two. Mariana Rivera takes over. And he is protecting a 6-2 lead here in the ninth inning. And he has been just that. Mariano Rivera, there's been nobody better. A 0.75 ERA in his postseason career. And he has had chance after chance after chance to give it up. And this guy is as automatic as there is, especially in October. And in our view, he has been the MVP year after year for Joe Torre at the end of the game to be able to hand the lead or a tie game to keep it tied to Mariano Rivera. His rate of success has been phenomenal. As we said last inning he is the factor that distinguishes the Yankees success over the last eight years. 94 mile an hour fastball Veritek thought it was high at strike one. To the second baseman Soriano. This week, Fox NFL Sunday begins. America's number one pregame show. Then the Bucks try to rebound from that Monday night heartbreaking loss. They take on the Redskins. The Dallas Cowboys hosting the Eagles trying to make a run. And it's the other New York Boston battle. The Giants travel to New England. Our other regional action. It begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Trot Nixon now at the plate. Strike one. And when you look at Rivera, you're not talking about a strikeout pitcher. You're not talking about a ground ball pitcher. But more than anything else, he keeps the ball off the fat part of the bat. He's a trademark pitcher in every way. He breaks more bats than anybody per pitch in the big leagues. Well, The, the thing that's different about him is because it is a cutter and it's in the mid 90s. There's nobody else in the game that throws a cut fastball. Even you know, Al Leder is probably the closest, and he's 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 throwing around 88, 89. Nobody else is even close. And 2 still on two. And he and, he's, and he pinpoints it. He doesn't miss by a foot. He misses by an inch. He puts it right in that zone where you think you can hit it, and then especially the lefties. You either get jammed or you hit it hard foul. Right. As tough as he is on righties, uh, he's much tougher on lefties. Stash Nixon. 0 and 2. This series is on its way 
back to Fenway with it even at a game apiece. And that matchup that everybody will be talking about, already have talked about, Roger Clemens and Pedro Martinez. Two up. Along with Steve Horn, who assists us here in the booth, we thank our coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on Fox, the producer of tonight's game, Michael Weissman. The director is Bill Webb. Nobody better in the game. Tape producer is Aaron Stoikov, the associate director, Kathy Hunt, broadcast associates, Eric Billigmeyer and David Duvall. With two out, nobody on. Todd Walker pinch hitting and he takes ball one if nothing else at least this gives Walker a look at Mariano Rivera that he can catalog for later on in this series but that's one thing getting a hit and making it something is another as Walker shakes out his right hand as if it grazed him it counts two and oh or just the very thought of being hit on it perhaps. This crowd chanting, we want Pedro. Two balls and a strike with two out on Todd Walker. Three and one. Pedro amused by the chant here at Yankee Stadium. Three one pitch. That's down the left field line and Todd Walker has reached Rivera for a two out hit. And Dave McCarty will walk to the plate as another pinch hitter. The VP of Field Operations, Jerry oh, Steinberg, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. our technical producer, Dave Hill. Studio show produced by Gary Lang. Directed by Bob Levy. The coordinating producer of the studio show, Scott Ackerson. Technical supervisor, Jack Simmons. Senior producer of Fox Sports, Bill Brown. And the executive producers, Ed Gorn and David Hill. Janice Kazaza is the highlight supervisor. And we play here in the ninth inning with one on two out and here is McCarty. Walker takes second uncontested. I think the Yankee fans were more playful with Pedro Martinez then because they're going to get him on Saturday. The Yankees know that and you might beat him but you're not going to intimidate him. Forget it. Unintimidatable. Oh and two. The crowd at Fenway will be chanting Roger, Roger. What were they saying? We want Pedro. I don't think the crowd has faced him. <laughs> there were no Yankees joining in that chant. The 0 2 pitch to McCarty. The Yankees have won game two. And this series is tied at a game apiece going to Fenway. A strong start from Pettit. They needed it out of the left hander like they did in game two of the division series against Minnesota and then lights out relief work by Contreras and Rivera. On Saturday in the shadows a 430 start Martinez and Clemens. Nick Johnson the home run to put the Yankees on top for good in the second inning and it ends a 6 2 final here at Yankee Stadium. As the Yankees celebrate this victory we check in with Kenny Albert Kenny. All right thanks guys Nick Johnson two run homer back in the second inning what were you looking for from Derek Lowe and what did you get. Well he's got a great sinker in uh, that situation I was looking for a pitch down the middle and got a little cutter and put a good swing on it. 
Andy Pettit does it again. He won game two in Minnesota after you guys lost game one. Wins game two tonight against Boston after the loss last night. Talk about his performance. Great. Uh, kept him off balance. Uh, let us swing the bats a little bit, and he held him down and uh, got a good win. What was the mood in the clubhouse prior to the game, knowing that if you lose tonight, you're down 0-2, heading up for games 3, 4, and 5 at Fenway? Just come out, play hard, battle, and uh, Andy threw a great game, and uh, see if we score some runs. All right, Nick, congratulations. Thank you. Joe. Kenny, thanks, and thanks for joining us here at Yankee Stadium. For more information on today's game and for the latest information on Major League Baseball, go to FoxSports.com. For Tim McCarver, Brett Boone, and Kenny Albert, I'm Joe Buck. So long from New York. It was a game the Yankees had to have tonight. It was a game the Yankees get thanks to strong pitching by Pettit, Contreras, and Rivera. And timely hitting, Nick Johnson. Bernie Williams with a couple of hits, an RBI and two runs scored. Posada with the tack on two out, two run double in the seventh. This series shaping up for a big game three on Saturday afternoon. Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens, back in Boston with his series knotted at a game of peace. Jeannie Zelasco and Kevin Kennedy will be along in the Fox Network Center with some final thoughts after these words. Saturday's game time, 4-14 Eastern. We hope you join us. Should be fun. From all of us in New York, so long. Empire struck back early. Andy Pettit in trouble early, but get some help right here. A strike him out, throw him out. Great throw by Posada later on. Jorge Posada, but also hit a two-run double to help his teammate out in the second inning. Need a double play ball? He got it right here. Two on, nobody out. Jeter unassisted to first base. And how about Nick Johnson sitting up in the bottom of the sixth? And second, one for 16, no longer. Two for 17, two-run home run. Yankees win. The Yankees win. First home run by a Yankee at home this postseason, Kevin Kennedy. But how about Andy Pettit, Mr. Fix-It in the Divisional Series? Again, he's now 5-0 in his last five ALCS starts. He's the guy that Joe Torre counts on. We talked about in the pregame show how he can be. He's very calm. He, he can be dominant at times. But getting that cutter, the changeup, mixing the curveball. He did it all tonight. Six and two-thirds strong innings. And as I said, he got help in the first couple of innings as well. And the Yankees have never lost back-to-back -back home games in an NLCS under the one and only Joe Torrey. But how about tomorrow night as the NLCS wages on? Kerry Wood trying to maintain his dominance in the postseason. 18 punch outs. Got to face Mark Redman, not a power guy. Good changeup. He'll try to neutralize Sammy Sosa and Moses Alou with that changeup. And we'll be there tomorrow. Baseball's postseason continues 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Game 3 of the NLCS. Sports biggest month of the year continues tomorrow only on Fox. But I can't help but look ahead to Saturday. An oh, exciting to. showdown at Fenway. Clemens back at Fenway Park. He's going to be up for it. So is Pedro. Great matchup for Game 3. All right. All dressed up with uh, just one place to go. More baseball tomorrow night on Fox. Game 3 of the NLCS.